Welcome to the Quilt Addicts Anonymous beginner quilting video tutorial series. I'm Stephanie Sebane. A big thanks to QT Fabric for hosting this series. Make sure you join in the fabric fun over at qtfabrics.com. They imagine so you can create. So we've made it to the end. We have finished our quilt. Now we need to talk about caring for it so that it lasts for a long, long time. Now we've spent a lot of time getting to this point. So we want to definitely make sure we take care when we're washing and caring for it as well. So first let's talk about washing. Now, a lot of quilters, the first thing they will do when they are finished is they will throw it in the wash and dry it, and then it gets this little crinkly, cozy look to it. And that happens whenever you have a natural fiber batting. It is going to shrink about 3% usually, and it gives it that nice, cozy look to it. Now, a lot of times I don't wash my quilts because mine end up getting shown at shows and at lectures at quilt guilds and of course in my shop. And so I like to have that nice crisp look to them. So I usually don't wash mine until it's, they become like a family quilt. They become like a shop quilt for a long time before they get to that point. Um, so, and that's perfectly fine too. You do not have to wash your quilt right away. But when you do, first of all, you don't have to wash it all the time. You really only need to wash it maybe once a year or if it gets dirty. Um, if something spills on it, you'll wanna wash it obviously right away, spot treat, whatever it is with, with soap first and then go ahead and get in at the rest of it. So let's talk about quilt soap. So you do not have to use a specific soap that's meant for quilting. But what you should do is you should avoid any type of laundry detergent that has any type of dyes or fragrances in them because that just adds extra stuff that you do not need and it will also deteriorate your fabric more over time because there's just those extra chemicals and things in it. You can also get products that are made specifically for quilts. Um, quilt soap is kind of the premier one that people know of really well. Conservators use Orvis paste, which is essentially soap for horses. You can buy it at Farm and Fleet for at a gallon at a time, but uh, this is basically the same thing, and, but in a much more manageable size. And you want to shake it when you get it, when you're ready to use it, because there will be sort of this milky consistency stuff that kind of sits in the bottom. And so you want to make sure that it's incorporated really well. So give it a really good shake. And then you really only need, it's one tablespoon per like full washer. So you really do not need a lot. You can get one of these and it will last you pretty much forever when washing your quilt. Soak is a newer product uh, that's out there. I got the uh, fragrance or the scented free version because again I don't want to add anything extra that I don't need because that's a chemical that makes that scent and you just in this case you just need a couple of catfuls uh, to go in there and you can wash your entire quilt and you don't need a ton so if you're giving a quilt as a gift this would be a really nice little addition to it and you can explain hey you just really need a little bit of this when you're washing it obviously baby quilts those are going to be washed a lot more um, or anything that's for a kid, you know, it's liable to get dirty more frequently and you may have to deal with that on a more regular basis. But usually like once a year is totally fine for washing your quilts um, unless they get a lot of use and abuse and you need to do it more frequently. There also is a really great product called a color catcher. You can get it in the laundry aisle of any supermarket. Um, and they're really cool because what it does is it collects any excess dye. So if you ever had like a new pair of dark wash jeans and you washed it and then dye got on other things, that's what sometimes can happen with fabric depending on the fabric that's used and the dye that's used. So most quilters will throw in a couple of color catchers with their first wash of their quilt. And what that will do is it suspends any excess dye in the water and catches it on the sheet rather than redistributing it on the fabric on your quilt. Um, there's a really fancy product called Synthropol that you can get that does the same thing. It's in liquid form, but the color catchers are really easy to get and they work really well. So just go get a pack and throw it in the wash with your first quilt. Now, if you do pull it out, of the wash and you've noticed any bleeding, you don't put it in the dryer. Throw it in the wash a couple more times with some additional color catchers until all that dye lifts off and ends up on the color catchers instead of um, on your quilt and then it's okay to dry it. Because if you dry it with a color on it in a bad spot, it's gonna set the dye and then it's going to be almost impossible to get out later. Now a good way to avoid that is to just pre-wash all your fabric. Sometimes that's not possible. 
um, to do. Like if you get a pack of pre-cut five inch squares, you would never want to pre-wash those because there will be nothing left of them to use when you're done. So that's why color catchers are just a really good thing to have in your laundry arsenal when it comes time to washing your quilts. The other thing you wanna do is label your quilt. Um, a label should include information about you, who made it, the year you made it, maybe the occasion you made it for, like a baby shower or somebody's wedding, and the pattern that you used and who quilted it, if it was you or somebody else. Um, you can get some labels printed up. I had these made on Spoonflower. I designed the label myself, and then I had it printed on a yard of fabric. And what I've done with these is I have left some space here where I'll put the name of my pattern. And then I have a spot for who quilted it because I'm not always the person who quilts my quilts, but usually it's mine. But it also has design by Stephanie Sebbing because I design all my quilts. I want them to stay for a long time. And then I use what's called a Micron pen. You can get these at art supply stores and sometimes quilt shops will have them too. Um, the thicker the number on the top, the wider the tip. And so I like to work with a thicker tip. This one is a two. I would generally not go any smaller than that. Um, because you just want it. And this is different than a permanent marker. Permanent markers are permanent, but they are not color fast. So over time, like if you use black, it might turn to brown. This is permanent and color fast. And they do come in different colors, but I usually just use black for everything. Um, if you don't wanna go that route, you can just use plain fabric as well. So for this one, all I did was I cut like a three and a half by five and a half piece. So that way it would be three by five when it was done. And get this turned right sides out. And then I stitched all the way around and I left an opening for turning down here. And then I clipped off all of my corners and then I was able to flip this right sides together push those corners out and give it a good press. And so this opening is open, but I can stitch that closed as I stitch it to the back of my quilt. And then I can write some information on it. Like, let's see, this one was called split nine patch. And let's see, designed by Stephanie Seppin. Um, it's for the beginner quilting video tutorial series. And I made it in 2018. So now if anybody sees this years from now, they'll know this is the original quilt that came with this video tutorial series because it has my label on it. So what I do then is I just stitch this to the back of the quilt and I'll show you how I do that next. All right, I'm still working on my binding, but you would do this as your final step. So what you'll do is you'll pin this in the corner. Usually the bottom corner is a good spot for that. And I usually just put two pins on either side. All right, so I have threaded a needle and done my quilter's knot. And now I'm going to bury my threads and come up the side. And just like when we were doing binding, we do not want to see any of this on the front. We just want it to be visible on the back. So I'm using the exact same stitch I used when I bound the quilt. To go around this label. All right, when you get to the corner, just go ahead and turn it. It doesn't need to be super fancy. At this point, I can remove this pin. because I have sewn all the way down there. Then I can keep sewing around. Now when you get to the bottom, this is the part that we left open to turn everything. So we wanna make sure that we're catching both sides when we are sewing. So when you're bringing everything through to the top, just make sure you're catching both the bottom and the top of that so that you don't have fraying over time. You could also get a little steam -a seam and you could close that up that way. When you get back to where you started, I usually stitch a couple of stitches beyond it just to help secure that really well. Then I'm going to do my knot again 
and I'm gonna bury that. Well, that's it. We're really done with our quilts. Now you know how to take care of them. And now you can go off and do another quilting pattern. We have lots of original designs from Quilt Addicts Anonymous to choose from. A lot of them look challenging, but they actually are pretty easy when you break them down. We have lots of other video tutorials and tips and tricks that can help make you a really fabulous quilter. So make sure you check those out and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Again, a huge thanks to QT Fabrics for making this video tutorial series possible. We're able to bring it to you for free because they sponsored this entire video tutorial series. Make sure you check them out. We carry a lot of their fabrics over at shop.quiltatexonomous.com and you can get some for a discount if you use your coupon code that you got with your pattern to go with this video tutorial series. Thanks so much for following along and happy quilting.